So these will be built with 64 capability. And this is the actual temporary system that will be used to build the final system. So let's start building then. So it shows you how to compile the minimal system, contain just enough tools to start construction of the final CLFS system and allow a work environment with more units convenience than a minimum environment would. The tools in this chapter are cross compiled using the tool chain in cross tools, so that's what we've just built, and will be installed under the CLFS tools directory to keep them separate from the files installed in the installing basic system software. So you can see why I wanted to keep the XZ, TAR and BC files separate from tools, because obviously from what that just has just said, that paragraph or that sentence, the programs that are going into the tools directory will be 64 bit and yet we've compiled those programs in tools 2 um, as 32 bit um, so in theory we'd still be needing them while we're building now and they could po possibly get overwritten with 64 bit ver versions and then they wouldn't um, build at all or sorry or wouldn't run at all so if we just check in and have a look at what we've got in tools We've got, oh, we've got some basic things in there by the looks of it. Okay, not sure exactly what they are. Um, oh, it looks like glibc stuff, so that's obviously the library is there, uh, needs to be there, the 64-bit library, the cross library we've just built, so that explains that. Um, there's nothing there like GCC or um, any other tools or anything so that makes sense tools 2 we've got our XZ and TAR and BC tools there so that's fine and then in cross tools you can see we've got our compiler there um, and also looks like the bin utils as well um, but as you can see they're 64-bit compilers and programs so uh, let's carry on so it says to check one last time well we haven't done anything so that should obviously still oops still be correct and it is um, it says to ignore these warnings, they're safe if we see them, so that's fine. So now we need to um, create some more build variables and add them into the bash RC. Uh, advisable because we want, might want to come back after quitting this and log in and we won't have them unless we add them, so it's a good idea, idea to. So we start off with GMP. Now when I compiled this on the Pentium 4, it, it chooses the processor to optimize itself for. And strangely, it came up with a K8, which is an AMD chip, even though it's on an Intel chip. Um, so I actually forced it using C flags to use the correct chip now i don't know if that would have caused a problem if i hadn't done anything but i realized after this is only a temporary system and it probably wouldn't have made that much difference assuming it could have oh yeah it's done it again actually k8 um i'm going to leave it this time and see what happens um play devil's advocate here uh, and hope there's nothing wrong it doesn't say anything about it guessing anything wrong so i'm assuming it's going to be all right um maybe it's just a generic uh, 64 bit instruction set. It could be that K8 was the first time that AMD released the first um, x86 compatible 64 bit instruction set, and that could be could be that all that is. Um, I was just unduly worrying for nothing. Um, so that is compiled. I'll build this. What will be important is in the final chapter, uh, the final build. I have to make sure that it does actually choose the correct uh, system then. So I'll build this. Uh, 
and as a reminder we are building on a 32-bit system we're building 64-bit software now for the Intel 64-bit in fact yeah you can see it's got M tuning and, and March there as K8 it's just flicking up quickly on each compile I'm not actually so sure what the optimized setting would be for this processor it's probably either going to be uh, no Kona or Core 2 I would have thought for GCC Okay, that's done. Let's install it. And we'll move on to MPFR next. So yes, we've just built these just about half an hour ago or so, but uh, they were for the initial cross compiler tool chain but now we're actually building 64-bit versions using that cross compiler tool chain so I recognize options and that's just a warning so I think that's what it said to not worry about wasn't it uh, not quite the same but um, I don't believe we enabled C CXX anyway on the compiler. Uh, let's just go back and have a quick look. And it was actually, so I'm not sure. Oh, it just says unrecognized option. Okay. Oh, it's because I haven't moved on. All right, classic error. So I'll start again. I was going to say, I don't remember seeing that error. <laughs> and that's why. All right, that's better. So we've got a patch to put in first. Once we've changed into the directory. And configure the build. Install it. So MPC next. Cell
Okay, and install. So Krug. It's done. So this is a, an easy build. That's done. Tools. This should take about two or three minutes to build. So temporary directory. Configure it. And build it. Right, okay, a minute and a half, that's pretty good. And install. Move on to GCC. So once again, we go through patching it and adjusting it. I don't know why this is missing a few characters. So I'll just check that again. Uh, yep, that's fine. Temporary directory, configure it for the build. Uh, I've got another adjustment. And we build it. And this takes a little bit longer, probably a 
about 10 to 15 minutes.
Okay, that took eight minutes, just under nine minutes, so it's uh, pretty good again. Uh, let's install. And copy a header file that's needed. And that's GCC done. Move on to end curses. Okay, install it, and the same case is done. Bash. Okay, so it's bash done. Let's fix it done. done and move on to core utils So you might recognize this chapter a bit more as being the equivalent of the temporary tools section in the normal Linux from scratch manual in the type of packages that are being built and installed.
Right, let's call your tools done. Diffy tools next. A few tools done, move on to file. Similar commands. Let's probably bulk these all together. There might be a few more like this. All done. We want to gawk. And looks like we can recall that earlier configured command. Not that one, but that one there. Let's just check. Prefix equals tools build equals CLFS host and host equals CLFS target. text so CD get text tools then we create setting in the config dot cache and configure using that Build a single library. And a single program. Sort it by copying it. And move on to grep. Build 
build it and install it. Gzip. So let's use that configure command again. Just check everything really is the same and that's fine. to make. Again looks similar instructions. Okay, so we've got to get the right patch file here because that one's the patch file for the Linux kernel to bring it up to .21 and the one we want is this one here for the actual program. Again, said is similar method for building. In fact, the same, not similar. So now we're building tablets with a 64 bit. So while we're still extracting packages, the tar that we built in Tools 2 will be the tar that's still in use. So you can see why it's so important that it didn't get overwritten, which is why I put it somewhere else. And naturally, when we go into the um, environment for the temporary tools, um, tools 2 won't be used at all so it won't be picked up naturally so that's that's fine it all works out quite nicely Install that. And we've got text info next.
our util Linux. Right, so that's built, let's install it and tidy up. So like it says, it's not technically necessary, but it can be very useful to have a, an editor around in case you need to do any work. So XFD tools as before with tar. This is the 64-bit version and it won't overwrite or interfere with our 32-bit version. Not that it matters because I think we're nearly at the end of this part. Um, so XZ. Okay, so that's that. So we've got a common set of tools that can be used for the next stage. And as you can see, the next part is a choice to be made whether to boot or treat.